Mother. Good evening. Jonathan! Is it you? Where have you been, my prodigal son? I'm right here, Mother. I'm finally home. Yes, but this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now found. But where is your sister? Where is Mary? Mary? She... She is gone, Mother. I know she's gone. The question is, when will she return as you have? I miss my grandson so much. It's been days since their last visit. Why do you say Mary is visiting you, Mother? You know that's impossible. Why should it be? Are you not standing in front of me right now? Why should it be any different with your sister? But Mary really is dead, Mother. Yes. And are you not dead too? Isn't your father dead? And my grandson and my son-in-law, you're all gone. But you all still visit me from time to time. But I'm not dead, Mother. I'm really here, talking to you. Trying not to cry. Oh, it breaks my heart to have to tell you this. But of course you're dead, my darling boy. Just look at you, as pale as my Mary. Do you really see Mary and Father? Do you also see me as one of the dead? Yes. For many years, it was just a game. Since your father left us without a word, I took to the habit of speaking to him. Yes, I remember. I sometimes spied on you and listened to you talking with Father in the garden. It made me so angry then. But it was just a game, wasn't it? Yes, it was. But since then, my poor dead Mary visited me in my room. She led me to her grave and there you were. I now know the dead can haunt us. I'm so sorry. You did not deserve to endure this. Mary should never have done this to you. That's true, my son. But you know what the worst part is? I liked it when Mary spoke in my head. Now she is silent, and it makes me so sad. Should I leave you alone? Just ask, and I swear you'll never hear from me again. Oh, no, Johnny. You're always welcome in this house. And one day, when I finally die, We'll all be together again, just as Mary promised us. Do you need anything, Mother? Can I help you? I just want you to stay with me, Jonathan. Your room is ready. I asked Avery to make your bed. I'll stay as long as I can, I promise. Do you need anything else? Just one thing. Stop staring at me like that. As much as I love you, it breaks my heart to look at those empty and dead eyes. Are you working on a new painting? Not recently. I have trouble focusing on my subject and my mind quickly drifts. It's the same thing when I try to write poetry. I recently met a talented painter with an excellent technique. I wish you two could meet. I'm sure you'd like her. I'd be glad to meet her. What is her name? Is she famous? Is she dead too? She's not famous, and her name is of no importance. And yes, she is also dead. The important thing is, I hope you two get along. If she ever fancies meeting your mother, I'd be glad to welcome her into my home. Mother? Do you know what's been going on in this area? Not really. I don't go out much due to the epidemic, and when I do, I tend to get lost. What do you mean, you get lost? I hope you don't go outside alone. Of course not. When I go out, your father always comes with me, but he leaves me there sometimes, and I have trouble finding the way back. Have you returned to Whitechapel Cemetery since Mary's funeral? I never want to go back to that awful place. Wait. I think I went back once. 
And you were there too. And Mary? No, that can't be true. It was just a bad dream, Mother. A nightmare, yes. Mary was so angry. I walked back home alone. If that kind policeman had not called Avery from the station, I don't know what would have happened. Do you need... I'm all right. Good. Goodbyes. Jonathan, my dear, bring me my glasses. I remember Sunday walks and... Good evening, Avery. Mr. Jonathan, I can't believe my own eyes. Oh, it's a miracle. We all thought you were... Oh, sir, your poor sister. What a tragedy. I know, Avery. I know about my sister's murder. Miss Reed expected you to return to assist with the funeral right up until the last minute. Where have you been, Mr. Jonathan? We needed you here. How is my mother? Not well, I'm afraid, sir. Miss Reed is very fragile since the police brought her back home. The police? What happened? Miss Reed was found walking in the streets. She kept saying she had spoken with her son and daughter. She's resting now. Has she received appropriate medical care? I'm taking care of Miss Reed myself. Hospitals are so overwhelmed by the epidemic that they can only accept patients infected by influenza. Perhaps we could arrange a short trip. Somewhere sunny, like France. She has always been very fond of France. I think leaving London could do her good. I'm afraid Miss Reed is too frail for the moment. Recently, she started going out at night without remembering it. I have to watch her carefully. I'm sorry I could not be here for Mary's funeral. Your mother was strong, sir. But your support would have been appreciated. Apart from the priest and I, no one else attended your sister's funeral. To be present at the funeral with you both was my dearest wish, Avery. But I'm sorry, I simply could not attend. I would not dare to question your absence, Mr. Jonathan. All I can say is that we missed you a great deal during these difficult days. What is the situation in this part of town? For a time, the West End seems spared by the epidemic. But the situation is getting much worse. Have you no relatives anywhere? I'll understand if you want to take a few days to see family. Your father managed to guarantee my earnings as long as I take care of this house, sir. My sisters are dead, and I've never met my nephews. 
I'll stay, sir. I found an old letter written by my father and addressed to me. Do you know anything about it, Avery? Your father wanted me to give you this letter for your 35th birthday, but you left for the war, and the letter remained in his office. Until tonight. I realize now you knew my father better than I did. Do you know why he left, Avery? Did he ever speak to you about his departure? No, sir. Mr. Reed was not exactly forthcoming. Perhaps this letter will give you the information you require. Tell me the truth, Avery. Do you feel forced to stay here? Would you leave this house without the arrangement made by my father? No, sir. I have nowhere else to go. And I promised your father I'd take care of his family as long as I live. This house is dead, Avery. There is a curse on this family. You really should consider leaving. If only you could have been here sooner or more often. Maybe this house would not be that empty. But you're here now, sir. So my task is not over. You have served this family extremely well, Avery. Your support during these terrible times is much appreciated. Then I will stay. All I ask is that you take care of my own funeral if I die before the end of the epidemic. No mass grave, please, sir. Do you know my mother speaks to the dead members of this family? Yes. I sometimes hear her speaking to you, Miss Mary, and her baby. Sometimes your father, too. So she thinks I'm also dead. And what about you? I believe she only sees her relatives as the dead she speaks to, Mr. Jonathan. It breaks my heart to see Miss Reed like that. She may get better. It's only a hypothesis, but I know my mother is strong. Whatever illusions have clouded her mind, they will fade in time. Yes. With time, Miss Reed will recover from this cursed year. I know that your return can only be beneficial to that process. Do you really think I don't take enough care of my mother, Avery? Yes, I do, Mr. Jonathan. You clearly have something more to say. Speak your mind, Avery. I know you work hard to help the sick, but what will you do once the epidemic is over? I really don't know. I have always enjoyed seeing New Horizons. Once the epidemic is over, it would be nice to leave London for a while. I understand, Mr. Jonathan, but you have to realize that your mother needs you. Your next departure could break her heart. Do you need med- Thank you. Goodbye. Of course. Hello again. Jonathan, back already? Father seems to have left me some documents. Some sort of treasure hunt game. Do you know anything about them? No, Johnny. But your father always loved to write these little games for you when you were a boy. Don't you remember? I remember now. He used to post me these riddles as though they were sent by a mysterious games master. I'd spend weeks trying to decipher them. Your father was always so proud each time you found the answer. 
<laughs> he was not just the serious doer banker everybody thought he was. I was proud too. How could I forget that? The important thing is that you remember it now. I'll tell your father the next time I see him. He'll be so happy. Could father have conceived some sort of final game for me before he left? I really can't say, Johnny. Perhaps you should talk with Avery about that. He was your father's confidant more than I. Do you think Avery is right? Do you think I should take better care of you? I don't blame you, but you abandoned me, son. A mother should not survive her children. It's unbearable to know you're not here anymore. I know I have failed you since I returned. I even watched you bury Mary from a distance. From now on, I will protect you. You have my word. You don't have to apologize to me, Johnny. Do you think I did not notice how much you have changed? Have I changed that much, Mother? Am I still your son? You are still, and you'll always be. Despite your pale skin, your bloody eyes, and that echoing sadness in your voice. Tell me, Mother, how are you? All alone in this big house, with only Avery to take care of you. I'm sad most of the time. Sad that you have left me here alone. Sad that you don't tell me when you come or go. I'm so sorry, Mother. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I was coming home. I was home. London, Thames. And then it happened. What happened, Johnny? I was attacked, Mother. And I've not been the same since. The important thing is that you finally returned home. I was worried, you know. You were the last member of the family of whom I had no news. Even Mary comes more often than you. Goodbye, Mother. Try to rest now. Goodbye, son. Please come back soon. Aubrey, I'm not sure visiting Italy is a good idea this time of the year. Don't come closer! Get their weapons ready! We found one! Christ! A restaurant where the guests are blindfolded before being seated. Intriguing. It's locked, all right.
I cannot enter. There has been a fight here. I can see a blood trail. Left by one of the antagonists, perhaps? What a mess. Something terrible happened here. But what? Maybe there's a way to break into this house.
It's locked.
I cannot enter. Good evening, miss. Can I help you? I'm a doctor. Dr. Jonathan Reed. I am... I am... Karina Billow. I don't need any doctor. The rats... Where are the rats? Miss, you don't seem well at all. Are you afraid of rats? Has one bitten you? No. It's me who bites them. Tasty, juicy... I can't stop eating them. Help me, please. Help me to disobey the voice. Can I help you? The rats. Tell me about yourself, Miss Billow. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm hungry. Need to eat. Have you got something for me? Blood, perhaps? Can you give me blood, Dr. Reed? Don't you remember who you are, Miss? What you did for work? I was strong, proud. I campaigned for good causes. But that was before. Before. It does not matter anymore. I'm so hungry. What happened to you? The rats. The answer hides in their little crunchy bones. Their juicy, tiny brains. Miss Billow, please, try to concentrate. Why do you worry about rats so much? The voice in my head. He forces me to do so. Drink their blood, he said. Eat their flesh. Do you feel compelled to obey that voice, Miss Billow, even if you're loath to submit to it? Yes. Please, help. Tell me about the voice in your head. Who is it? Can you describe it? Is it someone you know, someone you met? Keep your mouth shut, he said. Don't ever speak about me or I'll abandon you. Help me, please, Doctor. What is the local news hereabouts, Miss Billow? Shadows. Shadows hunting shadows. Whispers in the dark. Pestilence. Suffering. Death. I must go now.
Hello? Is anyone there? Jonathan, is that you? I did not know you were back in London. Oh, my dear Johnny, I'm so sorry for your loss. Mary was such a sweetheart. Thank you, Venus. May I come in? I was going to bed, actually. Forgive me. With the epidemic, I tend to forget people are supposed to sleep at night. I'll tell you what. Come back tomorrow for... Good evening, sir. May I have your attention, please? Come on, Johnny. Don't you recognize your oldest friend? Clarence. Clarence Crossley. How are you? My God. So you survived the war, too. So sorry I didn't recognize you at first. I almost didn't recognize you, either. War does that to men, I heard. In my case, it was true, for... I witnessed the horror that lies underneath. When did you escape the war and return to London? You know what's funny? I almost never think about the war. Not anymore. I'm involved in another kind of battle now. I know what you mean. I haven't had much time to think about the war either since my return. Of course. With the epidemic, I... Bet you've been busy as well. Forgive me, Johnny. I, I didn't want to sound selfish. What is this new battle? Well, I saw terrible things during the war. Horrors I thought I'd forget. They're here, too. They're everywhere. Vampires. Do you need med- It's a little late for visiting it. What can I say? I haven't lost my old habits. I hope we're talking about the same. When did you... you know... How is your wife, Venus? We've spent so much time away from each other. And so many things have happened. But you're alive. You returned in one piece, and you have a family. How many soldiers can say the same? Believe me, it's not quite that simple. Unlike you, I'm not the man I used to be. Is everything all right at home? Surely Venus was relieved to see you return from France in one piece. If you forgot what people are like in this part of town, Johnny? 
Venus fears for our family reputation. Now her husband has become the village idiot. The Ascalon Club, the heart of British vampire society. Not quite as subtle as I expected. Support the Ascalon Club, the heart of British vampire society. Good evening, Miss. Oh my God, no! Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. Wait, no. Why do you think I would? What? Don't worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Ekons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. What do you think about this part of town? I was raised here, and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in a dark alley at night? You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh, are you blushing, Dr. Reed? Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste. Even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true, may I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich? I suppose you're right. But society must reform and renew itself, or we are all done for. Do you need my? I am fine. Tell me about your adoption. What do you want to know? Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion. But I have my own house now. I have a life to live, you see. And one day, I'll have my death to face. How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me, and I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct word is Ekon, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. 
She told me everything when I turned 16, though I suspected the truth for a long time before that. What are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? Are you a suffragette, then? Oh, you really are, Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time, even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh, now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning, I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously. And the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? What your mother is? Why should it? My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? Of course not. You have nothing to fear from me, or your mother. Good to know. And don't worry, my mother told me everything I need to know about vampire tricks, their nature as well as features. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. Do you know why Lady Asprey chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Why do you still hope to become a vampire in spite of your mother's refusal? It's the immortal aspect of vampires that interests me. The world won't improve unless women take charge. I'm convinced of that. You're obviously a clever woman with a good education and a brilliant future. But have you thought about the price you'd have to pay? The loneliness? The necessary masquerade? Is it not true of every high position? To change this world and make it a better place, one needs time on one's side. Your mother has refused to turn you into a vampire. Tell me more about it. Each time we argue, mother expresses the same fear. She wants me to remain alive and full of joy, rather than become melancholy and immortal. She claims you can't have one without the other. It's pure selfishness. It's your mother's choice. As daughters and sons, we have to accept the decisions our parents make for us despite our own wishes. I love my mother and have accepted everything from her. Even that she named me Charlotte when it was not my original name. Does it bother you? No. Whoever I was when I was born, 
I am now Charlotte Ashbury. It hurts as much as it makes me proud to know that's the name my mother will read on my tombstone. Your mother has walked this earth for much longer than you or I. She is wise, and we should not ignore her advice when we disagree with it. But why shouldn't I be allowed to forge my own experience? There can't be only one righteous way to deal with eternity. Tell me, Charlotte, how do you plan to achieve eternal life, since you've obviously given it a lot of thought? I won't give up. You have no idea how determined I am, sir. I may contract a deadly disease. I may throw myself under a carriage just to be saved by her sweet kiss. That's a disturbing answer, young lady. And the worst part of it is, I know you speak the truth. There are less dangerous ways, Doctor. Instead of throwing myself under a horse like Emily Davison, I could just throw myself into your arms. Be careful what you wish for, young lady. I could gaze at you right now and then take you to a shady corner and have my way with you. And leave your carcass to the rats. You... you wouldn't dare. My mother would know. She'd never forgive you. How could she suspect me? Do you know how many vampires are lurking in the city tonight as we speak? Vampires with a worse sense of humor than mine. Oh, my god. For one second, I thought you actually... Excellent, Dr. Reed. Very convincing. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me.
It's locked, all right. Do you know where you are standing right now? In front of the Ascalon Club, I presume. The Ascalon Club only summons or ostracizes. What is your business tonight? I received an invitation. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Please proceed. Lord Redgrave is waiting on you upstairs. There has been quite a battle here. I'm sure the Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. It's locked. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Welcome to the Ascalon Club.
It's locked, all right. My good friends, if I may have your attention. Behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bansher was no match for him. Here, here, here! Come forward, young Ekon, for we have so much to discuss. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, Earl of Bristol and Chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I have been eager to make your acquaintance. I have heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Ashbury expressed your wish to meet me. Yes. The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. Is she a good friend of yours? She has proved to be helpful on many occasions. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too fickle when it comes to important decisions. My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Ashbury. Of course not, and I praise your loyalty. Would you offer the same fidelity to the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of the Skull Plague that threatens London and the country. You have been on the front line in the East End. But the time has come to open up a second front, here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain. But we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Why are you suddenly so friendly? The last time I met one of yours, he tried to kill me. Are you referring to Fergal? He was the most useful of servants, but he was just a servant. You, on the other hand, Doctor, proved yourself much more worthy. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah, straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Doctor Reed. But first, I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? No, 
I haven't. Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club and to serve me as such. Before I accept, I have so many questions. Please ask. What is the Ascalon Club's express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean? Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly. William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. What does it mean to be a member of the Ascalon Club? It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire, but the true nature of its members remains a secret. Am I supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members, and I do appreciate obedience. I killed Fergal, who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all Skulls. Will his death be an issue? Do not worry. My priorities have changed. Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. I agree to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. My fellow members, dear friends, please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. Is he worthy? Is, Is his blood, blood pure? pure? Well, speak, Dr. Reed, in front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall, speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? Yes, I will. Then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic, but England's traditions are the backbone of our nation. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. Take your place among the bearers of the lance. One of us! One of us! I personally went patrolling last night in the West End, and I spotted at least two foreign echoes. This is an outrage. We shall chase these intruders down. I was chased by a gigantic Valkod two nights ago. I thought it was Fergal coming back, but no. That creature begs. Me. 
That went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale, especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was, though very long ago. Well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I, Lance Bearer. I'm listening. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic, and your findings were quite alarming. You were spying on me? Not personally. I rarely leave this building. But once he found you, Fergal kept me informed. Until you put an end to his mission. Who was Fergal? I don't see him sipping tea with the others in the club. Fergal Banshaw was my squire of sorts. Even before becoming that magnificent beast, he was a brute. He served me well for decades. No, I mean, what was he? He was clearly no ordinary vampire. No, he was a Vulcod. All muscles and instinct. Quite the rare breed. Ferociously territorial. Mortals often mistake them for werewolves. You do know I killed him? Yes. Will you bear ill will towards me for his death? Of course not. Your victory was quite impressive and courageous. You earned my respect. Do you know Edgar Swansea? Not personally. But I've been told he has some sort of immortal fetish and is a good friend of yours. Does it bother you that I consider him my good friend? As long as you reveal nothing of the club's inner workings, why should I forbid you engaging in conversation with the good Dr. Swansea? Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed, but for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the Skulls. I have met peaceful and wise Skulls. To exterminate them means we are no better than vampire hunters. Scowls are hideous, shameful creatures that give all Ekon a bad name. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club and you have carte blanche. Interrogate the locals, follow all the leads you find, and get results. How is your investigation going, Dr. Reed? I have a few questions. All right, but be... Goodbye, Lord. Godspeed. Yeah. What can you tell me about the Great Hunt? It's a major concern. And I'm convinced we'll only get a satisfactory conclusion by putting an end to the epidemic. I have already met Geoffrey McCullum. I am certain he will persist until he has killed every last vampire. The Guard's current successful recruitment campaign is driven by the ravenous behavior of the Skulls. I see. So without the epidemic creating Skulls, the Guard could not convince anybody of our presence. Exactly. Once we have put the epidemic behind us, we need only wait until the guard grows old and weak. Time will once again become our ally. What about the risk of a full-scale attack here? Geoffrey McCullum is a daring leader. That is exactly why so many of our number have left the country until things improve. But not me. I founded this club. I'll die defending it. You made me swear on the blood of William Marshall during my initiation ceremony. Why was that? William Marshall was the most glorious knight who ever lived. 
He served five kings and was a living example of probity for all. And he was my maker. William Marshall was a vampire. Is this some sort of joke? Wait. Could he be my maker? That would be joyful news. For it would mean he still walks among us. But alas, the great knight has left this world for good. Why is his blood so sacred to the Ascalon Club? He was simply the greatest defender of the realm we have ever known. I fought by his side at the Battle of Preston, and he made me his progeny following the fight. May I ask you about the mortal who attended my initiation? Mr. Aloysius Dawson. A member of the club does not normally ask questions about other members. We trust each other mutually. So he really is a member then? Indeed. Only the most eminent members are allowed to attend such ceremonies. Even if I admit some of us fled during the first hours of the Great Hunt. But Mr. Dawson is mortal. Are you not afraid he might reveal who you are? Especially to your enemies. Aloysius Dawson is a man of his word, as are all of us. This is the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. We do not grant access to the unworthy. Goodbye. Godspeed, Dr. Good evening, Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Figuratively. It's quite unsettling. As a doctor, I am more used to being the observer than the subject observed. Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Are you a member of the club? Yes, I am. And I have been for many years. And will be until the day I die. What can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member. And a dying one at that. Are you sick? Personally, I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir, it's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must admit, this one is my favorite. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. Mr. Dawson, of Dawson and Dawson, the wealthiest man in England. It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. What is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. What do you know about the Guard of Prewen? I should not say this, but I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. 
But they are our enemies. They are not mine, Dr. Reed. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods. But brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. A formidable, unscalable wall to isolate the deserving from the infected masses. But that would segregate the rich from the poor, would it not? It would be unjust. Our only course of action must be to save England. And to save England, we have to make sacrifices. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? Removed from all mortal concerns? Decisiveness is what the city needs, and it needs it now. I'm sure you have more important things to do than talking with an old man like myself. Welcome to the Ascalon Club. Yeah. Could I speak? Yeah. Goodbye. God speak. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. I think Lord Redgrave just suggested I was sired by an ancient vampire. Women, Doc. Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? <laughs> 
A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullaney's. A nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Goodbye, Charlotte. She's been... I'm investigating the source of the epidemic. Infection. Infection. And where is this? West of the park. Not very far. A, a big house with no sound, no light, no life left. I must... Good evening. I won't. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. But if you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Mullaney's... Yes? What about them? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. Going on in there, I wonder. You need some rest. Right to vote is only the first step. Women die too in this world. Good evening, sir. Please forgive me for disturbing you. I'm a doctor. I never judge a man by his title, but by his attitude. And you are not disturbing me at all. I am Calhoun Russell, and I welcome you. Well, I must admit, it's good to receive a warm welcome for once. I'm Dr... I'm Jonathan Reed. Welcome, Dr. Reed. Welcome to my humble shop. I may have a look at your... Good. How is the situation in this part of town? Life is good and peaceful. We're lucky to live in such an era of progress and wonders. Are you not concerned about the epidemic? Oh, I'm sure the authorities would take the appropriate measure if the danger were that high. I'm afraid the newspapers are seriously underestimating the situation. Things are critical, believe me. Well, that's news then. But I can't believe that things are that bad. Are you sure you're not exaggerating a bit? For the thrill of it? What can you tell me about this place? I recently found the best steak and kidney pie in the city. I'd be glad to share the address if you want. Finding a good restaurant? Is that really all that interests you? Oh, I have many passions, but nothing brings me ecstasy like subtle and ex I must confess, I have... Really? Well, I'm always happy to try new exotic meals. If you ever find an intriguing table, please share the address. Is it not a little too late to be trading? On the contrary, it is the perfect hour. Believe me, my friend, it is always at night that you meet the most fascinating characters. But what about the epidemic? 
The bombs and raids. And all the random violence. Please, sir, this is London, England. We will prevail. And if a bomb must fall on my shop, then I'll be there to hear it falling. So you prefer to work at night? Oh, I also enjoy a sunny day like everybody else. But the night always has a certain je ne sais quoi of its own. Do you have any family nearby? Not since my parents died. I'm London's lone gourmet. Really? But you seem to be such a pleasant and sociable fellow. I'm afraid the real hedonist has to be sometimes. I discovered ecstasy as a solitary pleasure, but it does not mean it can't ever be shared. London's Lone Gourmet. What a strange title. I used that name in my early years when I was a food critic, and I kept it. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? Not really. Wait, now that you mention it, I don't see the McPhersons in my favorite restaurants. They love delicate meals too, you understand. Thank you. It may be nothing, but I'll investigate anyway. Where do they live? They have a house in the southern part of the district, somewhere north of the railway bridge. There is a courtyard, if I remember rightly. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I Whether you need to buy something or not, I am happy to help. Out alone and can't find her way home. Yet? Yeah. I'm currently in. Not really, except all the McPherson's servants resigned a few days ago. They feared becoming infected, they said. The McPhersons? Where do they live? I think it's a rich house near the railway bridge in the southern part of the district. Goodbye, Ava. Of course, Miss. Hello, Jonathan. Back already. Goodbye. Goodbye. 